Luke chapter 2. Let us be reading verses 7 through verse number 20. And she brought forth her firstborn son. Are you there? Did you see that? It was Mary who gave birth to her firstborn son. You know what's firstborn? Panganay. That means after that, Jesus had siblings. Mary did not remain virgin as what church some religion claims. Okay? He was firstborn. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds. Are you there? Please read. These are real angel. Uh, this is a real angel. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. In the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them in heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even into Bethlehem and see these things which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at were those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things, and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. Christmas is coming, and uh, that's why we will be talking about some stories on the birth of Christ in the Bible. And right now we will focus on these unnamed men who were blessed by God in witnessing the very... Uh, the, 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 the uh, newly born Christ. If you would go to the story of the wise men, alam niyo yung story ng mga wise men, di ba? They, these, not three kings, but wise men. Not three wise men, but wise men. Nobody knows their number. But these wise men brought three gifts, gold, myrrh, and frankincense. So these wise men went to the, to the place inside a room are you with me so it was not on the very day that Christ was born that the wise men arrived they saw a young child when they arrived the shepherd saw a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes do you see that the difference so when you see this nativity picture with the shepherds and three kings it's fake it's not biblical. It's fake news. Okay? Wrong picture. Nung pinaganak po ang Panginoon, ang kasama niya po doon, si Mary at si Joseph, at saka po yung mga shepherds. Wala ang wise men. Yung wise men, pumunta po sila nung mga halos dalawang taon na si Kristo. Tignan po natin, Matthew chapter 2, so you would know. So that you know that I'm not lying, and the Bible is clear on that. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. Are you there? Matthew chapter 2. Verse number 10. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 10. The Bible tells us, When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw what? The baby? No. 
they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Where did they come in? They come into the house. You see, the wise men entered a house. Christ was born in a manger. There was no room. There was no house. There was no other place to give birth. But when so so Christ was born uh, in the time where uh, the shepherds came in the time where Christ was born. The wise men came in a different time. There were no shepherds when they came in. When they came in, they saw the young child and they offered their treasures, their gifts unto God. Okay? So, yung po yung wise men. Not three wise men. Okay? Not uh, three kings, wise men. Not even the chipmunks. Okay? So, let's go forward. Let's go to our lesson. But we will focus right now on the birth of Christ. We find some unnamed characters that appeared and were blessed by God. And these were the shepherds. The shepherds are not the richest of the people then. They were maybe not the most intelligent people that died. They were simple shepherds working in the field at night. They are blessed. Are you with me? The blessings of God come to people not in the status of, you know, not in their wealth status or whether they're famous or not God's blessing do not come with that God's blessing comes with his wisdom and praise God in this time it was the shepherds who were blessed by God personally witnessing the newly born Savior amen see that yung nasa original na nativity picture sila yung dapat na nasa bilin Okay mo? Hindi dapat yung tatlong hari. Naagaw sa kanila yung picture eh. Wala naman tatlong hari. There were no three kings who came on the birth of Christ. These are shepherds who were abiding in the field at night. Are you with me? It was cold. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was uh, a night time when, when these shepherds were taking care of their flock. They were working even at night. They are blessed because God communicated to them. They were blessed because God communicated with them. You're blessed when God talks to you. Amen. Are you with me now? Amen. One of the greatest blessings of churches, that's what I'm telling you before, last time when I preached. One of the greatest blessings of churches is when Christ was still speaking. We can be an organization, we can be a religion without God and His Word. We can grow. I can even tell you that I can stop the rain. Rain, stop. And you would believe, maybe. Are you with me? But without God and His Word, there is no blessing in the church. Praise God for churches with the Word of God. Praise God for God's Word that communicates to us. The Holy Spirit that illumines the word read, illumines the word heard, illumines the word understood. But nagpaliwanag ang banal na Espiritu sa'yo. You can read a whole book. Are you with me now? You can read a whole book and not being blessed. Pwede mong basahin ang buong Bible, hindi ka naman na-blessed kasi hindi naman nangusap sa'yo ang banal na Espiritu. Isa sa pinaka-blessing mo ng tao, makipag-usap sa'yo ang Diyos. You know, that's tragedy for me as a pastor. You know what's tragedy for me when God doesn't talk to me anymore? That's tragedy. Why? It will be a tragedy to the church because you will never hear of preaching anymore. So what I have to, to pray for is that God would continually communicate with me. It happened in the days of Eli. The word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. When there is no vision, the people perish. Pag hindi na nakikipag-usap ang Panginoon sa tao, nasisira tayo, nawawasak tayo, baka napapakinggan na lang natin ibang tao, baka napapakinggan na lang natin advices na mali, pag maasa na lang tayo sa payo lamang ng tao, hindi masama na humingi ng payo sa tao, pero sana matiyak ka na ang payo ng tao ay konektado sa kung anong sinasabi ng banal na kasulatan. Are you with me? It is a blessing when God communicates with us. 
Psalm 119, verse number 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. You see the prayer of the, the psalmist? Huwag ba kong hayaang maligaw? Maligaw ka na sa lugar. Huwag lang sa salita ng Diyos. Are you with me now? It's so hard to have a Bible and you don't understand what it says. Are you with me? It's so awful. Ang lukot-lukot naman natin. We all have the gadgets of today. You can download a Bible, e-Bible. You can buy a Bible anywhere. You are not persecuted. Nobody kills you when you read your Bible. And the very problem of today is when we have our Bible, but God does not communicate with us. Hindi nakipag-usap na ang Panginoon sa atin. The shepherds were blessed because God through His angel communicated with them. Isn't it amazing that God would never think of who you are? Uh -oh. I mean, hindi ka niya tinitan sa dami ng pera mo? Are you with me now? There are people that would talk with you because you have lots of money. And when you don't have money, they don't want to talk with you. You see? There are, there are even people that would talk with you because it's good to talk with you. But there are people who won't talk with you because they don't feel like talking with you. They're bored. Are you with me now? Misan di tayo bagay kausap. Pero ang Diyos, mga mahal kong kapatid, nakikipag-usap sa atin. God would still talk to us in His Word. It is a blessing. Amen. What is blessing for you? To have money? To have great gain? To be famous? One of the greatest blessings in life is God talking with us. And communicating with us. Still the Holy wouldn't even be conviction or rebuke. Still praise God for that. Kahit pa yan rebuke ng Banalay Espiritu. When you hear God's word and you are hurt because you know God is rebuking you, you still thank Him. Amen. He still cares. Amen. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Sabi ng Bible. Kahit pa masakit, kung alam mo rin naman at tinamaan ka dahil ang word of God yan. Lord, thank you. Mapapaano ka nalang, saruy. <laughs> alam mo yung saruy? Masarap na aruy. Pag tinamaan ka ng preaching, saruy. Aray, ako yan. Tama po. Lord, thank you. Mahal mo pa rin ako. Kinakausap mo pa rin ako. Gusto mo pa rin akong mabago. Meron ka pa rin plano sa aking buhay. It is a great blessing when we have God communicating with us. Amen. Thank God for that. Reminder, they were blessed because God communicated to them. They were blessed because God showed His glory to them. They were blessed because God showed His glory to them. One of the amazing things in Christians in a Christian's life is when we witness God's power working in us. Are you with me now? It's one thing to know Him by faith in His Word and then personally experiencing the blessing of faith and obedience when His power works in you. When He provides our needs. When He guides us. When He protects us. When, he's, when, 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 when His name is lifted us up in our life. Are you with me now? The, one of the pleasant things in a Christian's life is when God's glory is seen in our life. Pag nakikita pa yung kaluwalhatian ng Panginoon, ito yung kaibahan ng blessing sa iba. Hindi po masaba. Hindi po natin tinuturo na masaba ang mga regalo. Maganda po yan. Hindi po natin tinuturo na masama na bumili ka ng bagong gamit at iba pang bagay. Pero may mga tao, doon nakapokus sa kanila ang blessing. Uy, blessing, uy, blessing, uy, blessing. Hindi nila nakukuha ang mga pinakamahalagang blessing. Naka, naka, pano, just even in the in games, iba pag may mga, di ba, hindi naman kasi kasino yung iba. Pero, example, merong prizes. Merong 
2 million, 1 million, 300,000, tapos sa dulo 50 pesos. Yung mga pera at mga regalo, doon lang yun sa pinakamababang, pinakamababang premyo yan. Pinakamakababang premyo ng Panginoon yung mga material na bagay. Ang mga jackpot na premyo sa Diyos, yung kanyang salita, nakikipag-usap pa siya sa'yo. Maniwala ko kayo, hindi ko itubulahan. Mga matayo tayo eh. We are all dying, and once we die, no amount of funds can we get to heaven. Amen. You see? So, I'm not saying that it is not a blessing. Funds is still a blessing. Gifts and material things are blessing. But the greatest, and the greatest of His blessings are these spiritual things that happens to us. Amen. When God still speaks to you, that's jackpot. That's the first prize. That's a great prize. Pag nakikipag-usap pa ang Panginoon, that means when you, when you have days, are you with me now? When you have days that God stop talking with you anymore. When you have days that you don't feel His presence. When you have days that you think you're all alone. That's, a lo that's an awful day. That's a lonely day. That's a losing day. Uh -huh tayong blessing pag yan ang araw natin. Marami kang ang pera, hindi naman nakikipag-usap ang Diyos sa'yo. Are you with me now? Ang ganda na nga ng buhay mo, ang ganda nga ng bahay mo, ang ganda pa ng itsura mo, ang ganda pa ng talents mo. Pero hindi na nakikita ang Panginoon sa'yo. You see, last Wednesday, our preaching is about no funds. Wala kang pera, yun, tanong, patanong. Lahat po kami tinamaan sa title. No funds. Sa pulagad eh. Titan pala. But, but the, the thing that I said there in, in, in my preaching last Wednesday is this. What makes your life worth living? What makes your life worth living? Is the church? Are you with me? Ano pa yung number two point? Yo? Godliness with contentment is a great gain. Tapos yung great commission. You see? So, yun yung mga bagay na magbibigay sa buhay natin ng contentment. Tapos, ano nga yun? Pag meron ka nun, ano nga? It is a life with pleasurable. Amen. It is a life with power. Yun yung ibig ko sabihin. That's what I'm, that's what I want to point out right now. Last one say, there were two people, Peter and John, who don't have money. That's what we read in Acts, right? They don't even have money, but they are so powerful. They made the lame man walk. They made Christ's name proclaim. They, they turned the world upside down. People who don't have funds can turn the world upside down. Again, I'm not talking to remain a person without funds. Work hard. Maganda kung may pera tayo, magtrabaho tayo, galingan ho natin. Pero listen to this, hindi ho yan ang kapangyarihan natin. It's God's glory. When you are continually obeying the Lord, are you with me now? God will be seen in your life. And my, you cannot really limit that power. Sometimes, the focus of the modern age churches is self-power. You don't limit your power. You say, you be positive. That's not, that's not what the Bible says. Obey God, and God will be seen in your life. That's real power. Amen. Optimism is good, but that's not too powerful. Op our optimism, of course, when connected by faith, amen. Pero yung positive thinker ka lang, Ang gandun lang yan. Limited yan. Pero pag obedient ka sa Panginoon, sinusunod mo yung kanyang salita, na gagawa mo yung kalooban niya sa buhay mo, then God will bless you, then God will work in your life, and God will be seen in your life, and His glory will be shown in your life. And then that's a blessed life. The shepherds were blessed because they have seen the glory of God. The shepherds were blessed because God communicated with them. The shepherds were blessed because they were part of the priority. I don't know why. Why in the world are they part of that? But one thing is sure, they were part of the birth of Christ. Hindi ko alam bakit sila tinawag. Bakit hindi yung 
governor. O kahit yung iba rin naman na tagawalis lang doon sa daan. Pero sila ang tinawag. Yun ang blessing. Huh? You see, they were prioritized by the Lord. They were the first to hear the news. They were the first to saw the Savior, to see the Savior. They were blessed. Isn't it amazing when God when God makes something in this life and you are included with that? Isn't it amazing when God blesses and you're a part of it? Di ba maganda yun? Na yung naghimalaan Diyos kasama ka. Di ba sinesep ko yan sa inyo we are sharing about it before sa missing the blessing. It is one thing to listen to people that were blessed by God but it is another thing to be blessed personally by God. Maganda yung nakakapakinig ka, we blinesh siya, we blinesh siya. Pero ang sarap-sarap na alam mo, ikaw ang blinesh ng Panginoon. Yeah. Al naramdaman mo na kumilos siya sa buhay mo. Kasali ka. You are part of His work. Are you with me? Okay. Kaya sana prayer natin yan, Lord, use me. Make me a part of this work. Make me a part of your wondrous work. Wow. They are blessed. Amen? You see how blessed this shepherd was? Where? And now let's go forward. What will be the lesson from these shepherds? What can we get from them? What can we get from them? What lessons can we get from these blessed shepherds? Nung panahon po ng birth of Christ. Number one, they are responsible people. They are responsible. They were taking care of the flock. They were taking care of the flock. Open your Bible to the book of Luke once again. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. You see how responsible these people are? We can get lessons from them. They were taking care of their flock at night. They know that they are accountable. They were abiding. They were faithful in their tasks. They are keeping their ship. They are sincere and serious in their work. Are you with me? At night. Even at night. These men are responsible men. You find God not just with this, but throughout the New Testament, calling men who were working. Are you with me now? Never did we find Christ. I don't know if I'm perfect with this. I'm trying to recall or think. Would you find a passage, the Lord calling somebody sleeping? No. Wake up, wake up. Come, come with me and I will make you fishers of men. Is he? No. He saw Matthew working. He saw Peter and John fishing. These were responsible people. Are you with me? And he called them. Ano po ibig sabihin, mga kapatid? Gusto ng Diyos ng responsible tao. Gusto ng Diyos ng tao na accountable. Gusto niya na ginagawa mo yung best para sa Kanya. Are you with me? Hello, church? Let us be like these men. They are responsible. God called them. It might be the reason, it might be not. It is in His wisdom, God's wisdom, why these shepherds were invited to see the Lord. But one thing is perfectly true. They are responsible men. Are you there? Number two. Number two. They were obedient men. Tignan po natin. Tignan po natin. The Bible tells us, verse 10, are you there? And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a mother to heaven, who was praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Verse 15. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go. 
They were taking care of their sheep, but when the angels had God said, you go there, you see the Savior, let us now go. Mga kapatid, one of the blessed things that, that we can find in the shepherds is they are willing to leave their tasks when God calls them to go. They left their work. They changed their priority. They prioritized God in their life. Inanda nila ang Diyos. Every time you go to church, listen to this. Every time we go to church, we have plans. Are you with me? Hello? You have dreams. You want to do this. You want to do that. You want to earn. You want to get this one. You want to, you're working in this. Are you with me? And then when you came to church, you listen to preachings. And when the preaching was preached, God speaks to your heart. Listen, not all our plans, are you with me now, are mentioned in the preaching. But surely, when God's word is preached, there are some plans that were rejected by God. Are you with me now? Hello? When I was going to church before, I was smoking. Before, that was long ago, years ago. But when I come to church, I listen to preaching, and that was rebuked by God's word. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God. Then suddenly I learned that, and I surrendered it to God. Do you get the point? Are you with me? I had the wrong relationship before. And when preachings were preached, masakit yun, may iyak-iyak pa nga ako eh. But I have to give it up for the Lord. Because I want to obey. When you come here to the front, uh, when you come here to, to, to the church, you will be listening to preachings and God will deal with you through His Word. What God wants you to do is to obey Him while there is yet time. The shepherds obey. Had, it, had they disobeyed, they won't see Christ. Are you with me? What if the shepherd says, Oh my, it's night time. We're tired. Maybe we're just dreaming. Let's just go home. Sayang yung opportunity. There are so many opportunities in God's challenges. We miss them when we disobey. This is ironic. People in disobeying God thinks of the opportunities that we, they will lose. Are you with me? Listen, when I was called by God, there are so little, I might, I might, this not, might not be big, but these are little opportunities for me. When I was called by God, I left these little opportunities and had obeyed the Lord Jesus Christ. Then I got the great opportunities from Him. You see, di ba parang baliktad? Ang tao, pag inutusan ng Panginoon, ayaw niya susunod kasi nanghihinayang siya. Nanghihinayang siya. O paano ba ako makakakuha ng ilustrasyon? Paying walis. May walis ba dyan? God wants me to go there. But I won't leave this. God wants me to go there leaving this thing. The reason why I don't go there is because of this. Not knowing that I, have, I will have this. Plus this. Tupaw. Ang dami. Masyado ko niyayakap yung walis. That's how I compare. Can you compare with this one? Kaya mo bang ganun-ganun din yung malis na yan? You see? Thank you, Brother Javis. This is what God is offering. This is how can I compare the things that we so love not obeying God. Okay, baka hindi mo lang alam, 
Tapos kung ang taas-taas ng opportunity na yan, eh, itaas mo pa, ganyan ka taas yung opportunity mo. This is just here compared to God's command. <laughs> ang dami sanang kaya ng gawin ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. There are so many things that God can... That time, during the shepherd's time, it was to witness the face of the king. Yeah. It was to see the newborn savior. They could have missed had it not that they obeyed. Uh -huh. Praise God, they obey. Huwag natin masyadong yakapin yung mga bagay na mabibitawan natin pag si Lord na ang nagsabi. Just confirm it that it's not, not me only. Hindi na pinitan ka lang. If you really know that God is really talking to you, and God wants you to leave something, leave it for God. Leave it for God. You might lose that small opportunity. It's not an opportunity at all. Opportunity comes from God. God has something in store for us. Are you with me? Hello? They obeyed the Lord. Thirdly, that is they respect the word of God. They respect God's word. Kanina, number one, they are responsible in their work. Number two, they respect God's word. And number three, they reported the gospel. But last but not the least, verse number Verse number uh, 17. Are you there? Ready to go. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same, which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told by them. Can you imagine? You might not know what would be their reaction, but in this passage, they rejoice with what the shepherds told them. They knew that he was Savior. Why? The shepherds reported it immediately. Share the gospel, folks. Share the good news that Jesus saves. Do not forget that reminder. These are blessed shepherds. They reported the gospel. This Christmas season, do not forget that wonderful act. Do not forget that wonderful task. Tell your classmates about Jesus Christ. Tell your workmates about Jesus Christ. January, last Sunday, we will have our evangelistic meeting. Invite men that would come for lunch. We'll prepare lunch for them. But before that, we will preach the gospel to them. That Christ saves. Amen? Tell your loved ones, post it on Facebook. Do not be ashamed of what you've seen and witness. I have seen God. I have seen the Savior. Jesus. That's what they said. You have seen Him as well when you receive the Savior in your heart. Tell them about your Savior. Share po natin sa ibang Evangelio ni Cristo. Amen po ba? Let us be a part of this wonderful work of sharing the gospel to the world. There is only one Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? The Blessed Shepherd gives us a lesson this Christmas season.